busy in the ministry world improvement of world improvement for 19 years we were set up 19 years ago we uh, have developed over 150 different technologies of different kinds this is one of the machines we'll be demonstrating today it puts out extra energy enough to run itself and light up some lights and I thought that was impossible that's what we were all taught. Uh, the new paradigm shift is to realize that these things are going on all around us. Solar panels are over energy. Uh, we even have some that work at night now that are still in the experimental stage. And uh, we've been doing nighttime solar panels for 10 years, but the rest of the world's finally talking about it. Uh, see, the stars give off energy. Everything gives off energy. Matter itself will give off energy. Even the ether field will give off energy if it's if it's stressed correctly, uh, the gravity field, if you want to say it that way. The, the gravity is one aspect of the ether field, or the dominant energy field, and that will give off energy if it's stressed correctly. So it, literally, a field that appears to be neutral, which they define gravity as neutral, they define magnetism as neutral, as far as energy output, but if they stress them correctly, you can get them to give off energy. Fantastic, well, what have we got here? Here we are underneath here. Here we are underneath. Look at that, that, since you're looking at everything here, just take a picture underneath there. Okay. Just so we got it, in case somebody wants to see. You sure. can always cut it Nothing's out later. Inside. So you always, let me look underneath this one. And there we have again. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing inside. It's just an empty cinder block. Okay, there we go. And then we have capacitors, light bulbs, very interestingly wound motor, the motor that's turning the larger motor and the Veristat that controls the speed. And um, we've got a diode bridge there with a heat sink. Over here we have some electronic components. Uh, you probably can't see them on the video, but basically that helps, that basically controls, helps keep it stable and controls the amount of power so that, and, and even gets it into the right frequency range because this is a variable frequency generator, but over here, it's 60 cycles, which is what you want. Pretty close to 60 cycles. Okay. And uh, and it controls the voltage so that the voltage is the same. You know, it's not going up and down and stuff like that. So similar to inverter technology right there. Okay. And you got a bank of capacitors, and you got the load. Basically, that's the parts. There's also components in this blue box and that blue box. Okay. Yeah. So what do we do now? Okay, so we'll start it up. Okay. Let me, uh, it starts up with regular power. Okay. So you have to plug it in to get it going. On this one, yeah, you could use a battery. Okay. Uh, it could be done in different ways. So we have an extension cord here. Make sure everything's set right before we turn it on. Bang, don't, 
bone to jump out of your skin. Okay. okay. It does one. It does one short. So it usually makes a noise like a pop. About ten times louder than what you heard over there. Yeah, okay. So it made like a gunshot. Okay. Okay, we got power. So it is now disconnected. Yeah. It's running itself. Yeah. It is now a self-sustaining power supply. Yeah. And let me light up some lights here. <laughs> and it hasn't seemed to slow down at all. It should, because that voltage thing is a stabilizer. That should keep the voltage and the average completely stable. What's the wattage on those lights? Uh, right now, we're at, uh, the lights are at uh, about 900 watts. 900 watts of light bulbs, and it hasn't slowed down at all. No, it won't slow down. It's, it's, that's old school stuff when you got to slow it down. So it's running itself and providing power. Yeah. So it's self-sustaining. Yeah. So basically, that's it. Too great to look at. <laughs> Can this be scaled up? Oh, yeah. Uh, we've already done uh, over... 20 million watts of power on, 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 on different tests for ourselves. Basically. Now, a device like this, could it be used to run a car, or would it just be used to run a house, or a building, or a factory, or what already would you do? Already run cars, already run houses. So this is old to you? Yep. Now, as it's running, can you explain a little bit how this power could be self-sustaining? Is it from that big box of capacitors you have down there? Uh, the capacitors help establish the resonance. Uh, that those are AC capacitors. The energy they go to zero uh, about uh, about about a hundred times a second. They're going to zero, so they're charging and discharging to make an oscillation, a resonant type of oscillation. So it wouldn't be possible for those capacitors to hold the storage charge you'd need to keep that motor running. Those capacitors. Best case scenario, you can get you can get the lights to light up uh, for maybe. Uh, 10 seconds, best case scenario. So the secret isn't in that little starter motor down there, and it's not in the capacitor, so it's obviously in that huge motor you've got running in the center. Well, this and the electronics that go with it. Okay. Now, why hasn't the public seen something like this before? Because most people only know, they think the only thing that exists is electron flow, and they don't know that there's, there's lots of forms. Nikola Tesla said there's many forms of electromagnetic uh, forces or electromagnetic flows, electromagnetic types of electromagnetism, if you want to say it that way. Okay. Uh, almost everybody's only familiar with electron flow. Well, actually, most people are not even familiar with that. Uh, the only thing they teach in college, if I'll put it that way, is electron flow. That's it. Uh, there's many others, many other things. You need to know how to work with several of them to get them to work right. Okay. So, the trick is not is not only just being able to build it, it's knowing how to tune what you're building. Right. Okay. Is this a science that's readily known anywhere in the world, or is it something you guys have come up with? Well, we've developed it, we've redeveloped it. Keeley was the original one in this country that I know of. Uh, Stubblefield, Keeley, Tesla, those guys worked on this stuff. Uh, we've uh, made an effort to duplicate their work. There wasn't much information left from them. Uh, another one was Henry Moray. He did write a book or two that you can still find sometimes. Uh, it's hard to find. You can get so there's there's little bits and pieces of information here and there. But a lot of a lot of building, a lot of money, a lot of time. We had 50 guys working for years. Uh, well, a couple, a couple of them were women, but uh, 50 people were working for years to get where we are now. So it just happened. We didn't just walk around the block and never happened. So your ministry didn't one day just open up and have these technologies available? Well, it took us about uh, a year to get the first over the Unity device one. Because that's available on video too, and that's the, the old delay light mode. The okay. first, first delay light mode. That was the first one 
first clearly over here to be a bystander. Do you think this is the most advanced motor system that you have available? You no, know, we can do solid state. It's, it's basically a matter of uh, who has the money and how much do they have and what do they want to spend it on and so on and so forth. It's basically a matter of you know, cost. It's very cost effective on a large scale. Everybody for some reason prefers small scale stuff. If cities or countries or governments would go along with this, uh, or the whole planet, you could literally build, we could literally build one device to run the whole planet. You could build one device to run the whole planet? All the electrical needs of the whole planet. Uh, you can transmit the electricity through the air, you don't need the wires, uh, and through the earth itself uh, as a conductor, and uh, it's done deal, basically. Now, let me ask you, with something like this, do you think, it's providing the power, or is it a conduit for power that's already out there? It's a conduit for power that's already out there. But modern quantum physics recognizes 200 million watts in every cubic foot of space, something like that. And so, uh, you know, some branches of physics say it's impossible, but other branches of physics say there's an extremely large amount of power available, even in empty space. So this is a conduit. This is not a generator. That's correct. Okay. That's, that you can call it a generator if you want. Uh, because all generators are conduits, it's just most of them do it very poorly. That's basically what's going on. Well, we've been talking now for about two minutes, and the lights haven't dimmed, the motor hasn't stopped, and nothing's exploded. So obviously, you've got a handle on <laughs> yeah. how to create this type the of energy. The good part is nothing exploded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, even if these things go, and you, the worst you get is a big noise. You know, as far as pieces going flying, like on fuel systems. You never get that. People are catching on fire or fire going so you never get that. Uh, the worst you get is a loud bang on these types of systems. Now it sounds like if you're a conduit for this much energy, it sounds like you'd be emitting a lot of type of radiation, some form of radiation. No harmful radiation. Electromagnetic fields, that's it. That's it. So, and this is the kind of field that's expanding out 25 feet in all directions, is it? Uh, well, I don't know if you want me to go into all that. You want me to go into all that? No, I mean, not, you don't have to go into the science of it. I'm just trying if, to think. If you want to, the short answer is no, I guess. But, okay. but uh, to tell the whole truth, there's quite a bit to it. But uh, the short answer is it's, it's a very safe field, so on and so forth. Uh, yeah. it's, it's safer than what what normally comes out of the light bulbs. You know, that's basically the, the short answer. Okay. Well, great. Cool. I, <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Might be a little warm over there. All of a sudden it's dark. <laughs> <laughs> and it's still running. free edition of scientists and inventors for centuries. Among the trailblazers in this field was Nikola Tesla, whose groundbreaking work continues to inspire individuals searching for a way to break free from the limitations of conventional energy sources. One of the pivotal concepts in Tesla's work was back electromotive force, back EMF, a term that has taken on various interpretations and applications over the years. This video will explore the intriguing possibilities of back EMF and how it can be harnessed to generate free energy. Back EMF, the enigmatic force. The heart of Tesla's revolutionary, I Tesla's revolutionary ideas lay the concept of electromagnetic feedback. Tesla believed that an ordinary energy system, which typically consists of a generator and a motor, could be significantly enhanced through the incorporation of an electric current feedback in the electrical circuit. Central to this concept is counter-electromotive force, CEMF, also known as back electromotive force, back EMF, which is the voltage that opposes changes in electric current, induced by magnetic interactions. Back EMF can be understood from two angles, as a reverse electromotive force or as a reverse electromagnetic field. The distinction arises from the historical context surrounding its development. Following the dismissal of ether physics by Einstein in the failure of the Michelson-Morley experiment to confirm the existence of ether, the science of electricity underwent revision, leading to the evolution of the concept of back EMF. 
types of back EMF back EMF is not a singular phenomenon but manifests in various forms. 1 slash primitive back EMF, this is seen when a square pulse is applied to a coil. It serves as the foundation for more advanced applications. 2 slash back EMF from generators and induction motors, these devices generate back EMF during operation, and harnessing this can be a source of free energy. 3 slash back EMF from transformers, transformers, which are integral to power distribution, also generate back EMF that can be tapped into for energy. 4 slash back EMF in circuit breakers, even the operation of circuit breakers in the stressed ether can generate back EMF, presenting yet another avenue for energy capture. Harnessing back EMF for free energy. The allure of back EMF lies in its potential to generate free energy, unlocking new possibilities for sustainability. This can be achieved through several means. 1 slash generating radiant energy, back EMF can be transformed into radiant energy, a source of seemingly boundless power that Tesla himself explored. 2 slash free energy transformers, with the right setup, back EMF can be harnessed and transformed into usable electrical energy, potentially providing power at no cost. 3 slash utilizing back EMF in alternators, back EMF from alternators can be fed back into the induction motor, creating a self-sustaining system that produces free energy. The Easy DIY Power Plan, a gateway to free energy. The Easy DIY Power Plan represents an opportunity for individuals to experiment with and harness the power of back EMF. This plan offers step-by-step -step instructions, guiding users in designing self-powered generators based on Tesla's principles. These generators have been further enhanced by Tesla's free energy technology experts, making them more accessible and efficient. In the quest for free energy, that EMF stands as a fascinating and potentially game-changing concept. Whether it is viewed as a reverse electromotive force or a reverse electromagnetic field, its applications are rich and varied. Tesla's insights into the power of electromagnetic feedback continue to inspire innovations and experiments that may one day lead to a more sustainable and energy-abundant future. Easy DIY Power Plan is just one example of how back EMF is being harnessed to shape this vision of tomorrow. While the concept of free energy remains a contentious one, it's undeniably an idea worth exploring and understanding further, but the potential benefits it could bring to humanity are immeasurable. Following footsteps, on July 5, 1995, Floyd Sweet suffered a fatal heart attack at the age of 83. A couple of weeks before his death, Sweet said that the automotive industry was testing his power, his power unit for use in cars, and that they had a unit running for 5,000 hours. He said he was dealing with people at General Motors, but no one has been able to confirm Sweet's claims. The VTA itself is bogged down in legal problems. But Tom Bearden, who put much of his own time and money into the project, hopes that the VTA can be resurrected so that the world will realize what a pioneer Floyd Sweet was. And despite the confusion surrounding Sweet's affairs at the time of his death, other researchers are continuing this line of research. Confusion and secrecy. The automotive industry may not have been the only potential investor that Sweet was dealing with. At the time of his death, there was some confusion concerning the rights to Sweet's hardware and papers, held by Sweet's second wife, Violet. Bearden says that Sweet signed a number of agreements with a number of backers, and that some of these people have claimed rights to the invention. At least two of these investors say they want Sweet's laboratory equipment, inventions, and technical papers to go into AP Ropo's Floyd Sweet Museum so that other researchers could study the technology. Walter Rosenthal is trying to help all parties work towards an agreement. Despite Bearden's urging, Sweet never had the VTA certified by independent testing. He feared that his life would be snuffed out immediately if he even attempted such a thing, Bearden says.